Okay, here we are at Western Iowa Tech. I'm with Brian, and Brian made a really cool discovery I want to share with you guys. A company that he ran across by the name of JBM Industries. Very special company, and it'll save you a bunch of money. Tell us about it, Brian. All right, so JBM Industries makes rubber diaphragms. All right, anybody who's dealt with carburetors knows that these rubber diaphragms uh, wear out, and they... Usually, uh, they're not available the diaphragms themselves. They're only available diaphragm and slide. So the OEM or Honda product is about $130 to $150, depending on make and model, um, for the overall slide with the diaphragm on it. Um, so with a V-twin like mine is, uh, you were looking at about uh, $250 to $300 to uh, replace these. Um, at uh, the... Um, instance of one of my instructors, I went online and found this company who makes these aftermarket diaphragms. And these are just a rubber diaphragm. They're a little bit thicker than OEM would be. And as you know, the OEM ones are rubber over top of a fabric. These aren't, these are just straight rubber. So uh, JBM Industries uh, charges $20 per diaphragm. So. All right, walk us through the process. All right, so what you want to do is you want to get your carbs off your bike, obviously, or whatever you're taking your carbs off of, because it's, it's not just bikes, you know. Um, and then you want, to, you want to maintain pressure on the top cap, because there's a spring under here uh, that goes inside and helps force your slide back down. Um, and there is pressure, so it will come flying out there. You could lose some screws. So what we want to do is we want to take all your screws off. I've already loosened them up. Okay, so you want to be mindful of where this divot is in here on the outside because that lines up underneath with your vacuum hole. So this, this is what helps the diaphragm go up and down on yours. You also got to watch these tabs here. These are, these are tabs that tell you where they go and they go in these two recess slots. It's a little bit raised, so be mindful of that. Alright, so I'm going to pull this out of here. The slide just comes out. Okay, and then I highly suggest, they don't suggest it on the site, but I highly suggest to take the needle out because it takes three seconds. You literally look down in here, and there's a cross tip diaphragm. Just reach down in there with the screwdriver. Don't even have to look at it. Twist, and it comes right out. And then you just very carefully drop your needle into your hand. And you won't bend your needle, you won't damage it. And it's just better overall. So when you're prying on this and trying to get this diaphragm off of here, you got to be careful. So on this one, there's a top ring and there is a bottom ring on this diaphragm. So for ease of removal, I will take the top one off first and then remove the bottom one. So take a pair of scissors. You want to make a, a mention of uh, marking the slide? Okay. Yeah. Also, um, this flat surface goes right in front of your your butterfly. Um, it also lines up with your, uh, your little uh, ear here on, the, on your diaphragm. And there is a specific place where that goes. So you want to mark that before you take that slide out of there, like I did on the inside where the metal is, because that metal is going to stay there. The rest of it is not. So mark anywhere else is going to help you. That just lets you know where your diaphragm is going to be installed back at, so you can line this ear back up again. And that way it drops back down into the slide where it belongs. So, I just take my pair of side cutters, reach in here, and get a good crimp on this small one, and then it'll break free, like this one did. And take that off, then the bottom ring will come off, or the, the diaphragm itself will come off. Then you have to take, and you may have to take a couple of bites to get this off, and then get in there and get it to snap. If you can't get it with your, with your uh, pair of side cutters, you can put take when you've taken enough material out, you can put a screwdriver in there and pop it free, and it'll finish breaking it. So, and then they'll just pull apart and come off of there. So when JBM Industries has you order, they want to know a couple things. They want to know the outside overall um, diameter 
of your of your top in here so you want to know from outside of here to the outside of here you want to know what that is in mine they're 72 millimeters okay then you also want to know what the overall diameter is here inside this groove because that's where your diaphragm is going to set and in this one there are 30 there are 32 millimeters so, when JBM Industries sends you yours, they'll come in a Ziploc bag here, like mine did in a pair. I'll take this out of here. And you'll see that the reason why you take those rings out is because this tire, they call it, is the exact measurement to fit in here. So it fits nice and snug. So I'll find my mark, and then I will roll this on here. may have to do a little bit of pulling, but uh, as they say in the directions, don't over pull because if you over exaggerate it, then it may uh, cause you issues. So you'll see here I lined up the ear up and I did it upside down. As you can tell by the lip is on the top. So we'll take it back off again, flip it right side out, line her up, slide it back on there. All right, see, not a big deal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a Loctite super glue gel, and I'm gonna run a bead of it all the way around here, and I'm gonna let this dry completely before I start messing with this and putting this back in to, uh, back into the carburetors, because uh, you want the glue to set up so that it doesn't have any possibility of maybe twisting or spinning or um, becoming misaligned before it goes into the bike or whatever product you're using. I have this one here, which I already did, and you'll see my mark here on the inside, and you'll see where the glue is dry, and you can pull and tug, and this is not going anywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna reinstall this one back into the carburetor. So first things first, we're gonna take our needle and we're gonna put it back in there. I'm going to stick my screwdriver down in there, and I'm going to lock it back down, and you're going to check your, to make sure that the, that the needle goes back and forth on the spring, and that it still can spin. That's how you know it's properly installed. Was from the rear cylinder. So we're going to take and we're going to put our slide back in, making sure we get our needle back into the needle jet. So the needle goes down in there. And we slide her back around to make sure we have where our dog ear is here. Lines up with the mark, and you can see the groove down here. And you can take and you can open your butterfly. And you can see in there, I don't know if you can see, hopefully you can see, you can see where that flat surface is that allows the butterfly to move back and forth. Okay. So we're going to let the diaphragm come up a little bit. We're going to fold it over. It's the proper way to install it. Let it sit down in here. Okay. I'm going to be real delicate with these. Can you see? Sits down in there nice and easy. You want to hold the bottom of it with your finger to keep it from going on down too far on the slide. And then the next part, we're going to take the spring, put our spring back in, take our cover, being mindful of where the the uh, the notch is. We're going to line this back up there. Once you're to this point, you can hold this and you can release the inside slide and you can put your screws back in.
So, as you can see, it reacts immediately and goes up and down. Okay, to, so to sum up what we did, we went ahead and obviously removed our carbs first. Um, then we, one at a time, took our diaphragms apart, and made sure to label everything, be mindful of our, um, our vents and where those locations are on the diaphragms and the lids. Uh, we want to make sure that when you put your glue around here, that you put enough in there to hold it in place um, and let it dry thoroughly before you try to install it and start putting uh, it back into functioning. Um, so I would say that from a mechanic point of view uh, and from an owner's point of view, this is an excellent uh, money saver. Um, instead of having to spend 260 to $300 for parts, getting these rubber diaphragms that are a little bit, I would say, a little bit better quality than an OEM product diaphragm, um, and being able to install these for 20 bucks a piece as opposed to 300 bucks for a set of two. Uh, so I think I spent uh, $48 total with shipping um, in the U.S. So uh, I, I would uh, highly, highly recommend that people use these diaphragms. Uh, they are excellent quality, um, and I do believe I will get quite a bit of riding out of these diaphragms in my carburetors. So kudos to JBM Industries.